So first we'll go into major drug classification. So this is what I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation is utilizing the root words. So when you come across a particular drug in uh, NCLEX question, take a look at the root word that's in that drug and relate that root word back to the drug class. Because again, all the particular drugs within a class all have the same root word, meaning they all have the same mechanism of action, typically the same adverse effects, drug interaction. So knowing them as a whole, as opposed to individual drugs. So uh, phenytoin, anti-seizure medications, alpha blockers, typically end in zosin. So what are these drugs being used for? What is a drug like prazosin being used for? What are alpha blockers used for? Hypertension, good. They're also used for BPH. So when you see zosin, think of hypertension meds and BPH meds. Beta blockers, which are also used to lower blood pressure. Benzodiazepines, which usually end in either PAM or LAM. What are benzodiazepines used for? Anxiety, good. Um, ACE inhibitors and ARBs. ACE inhibitors end in PRIL. ARBs end in SARTAN. Calcium channel blockers end in DIPINE. So here we have a bunch of other cardiac drugs. Statins, those drugs to lower cholesterol. Um, anytime you see a drug that ends in ASE or PLACE, maybe indicating that it's a thrombolytic, so uh, think of it as a drug used to dissolve clots, clot busters. Anytime the drug ends in ONE, and you could also add to that, I'll put it in the chat, IDE. Whoops. IDE. So IDE or ONE are your steroids. So drugs like prednisone, budesonide, so drugs for inflammation. Um, drugs ending in tural are your bronchodilators. So what type of conditions will we see albuterol being used for? What do you think? Asthma and COPD, good. Um, bisphosphonates all end in dronate. Alendronate, it's used for osteoporosis. Uh, I see a question in the chat. What does, which ones does IDE and ONE? So your steroids, all of your steroids will either end in ONE or IDE. So for example, you have on the slide prednisone ends in ONE. And here's one that's not on the side, but There's budesonide. So all drugs that end in O-N-E or I-D are steroids. Okay, drugs typically ending in tidine or prazole. Okay, so tidine, H2 blockers like ranitidine, prazole, PPIs like omeprazole. What are those drugs used for? What conditions come to mind for those drugs? Good, GERD, PUD, peptic ulcer disease. And then your antibiotics, all your penicillins end in cillin. All of your cephalosporins begin with CEF or CEPH. All your tetracyclines end in cycline. Fluoroquinolones end in floxacin, macrolides. And here you need to be careful with the macrolides and aminoglycosides because they do share the same, very similar root words. They end in myosin. So just be careful not to mix up the macrolides and aminoglycosides. 
azole antifungals like ketoconazole. When you see triptan in a drug name, that usually means it's for migraines. If you see denophil or dolophil, that means that the drug is used for erectile dysfunction, like sildenafil, which is Viagra. So the root words do help you to relate it back to the class as a whole. So first uh, set of drugs we'll go over are those that affect the autonomic nervous system. Okay, so sympathetic and parasympathetic need, uh, agents. So two systems that oppose each other, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Which one is responsible? To ask you guys if you can recall this, which one is responsible for your flight and or fight reaction? Is it sympathetic or parasympathetic? So which one? Sympathetic, good. So sympathetic is responsible for fight or flight, whereas think of parasympathetic is rest and digest. Okay, so sympathetic is going to speed things up. Para 